Coop and Cassius for Eiffel TV in association with MTK Global. We're at the press conference here for Crawler Burns, October 7th, Manchester Arena. With me, I'm joined by Anthony Crawler. How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. I'm good, Coogan. You okay? Yeah, there was no ag here today, was there? Nah, there never was going to be. There's really never any ag in any of your press conferences, though, nah, is there? Nah, there's, there's not really so, but today there's never going to be. You did promise me a few fights ago that one day before you I retire, know, you'll know, launch but a this table. This wasn't the one I was thinking about. <laughs> it's it, definitely not the one with Burns. It's not the one with Ricky. <laughs> he's sent some Ricky's. Um, a great fighter and a great guy, you know. Um, but, like I've said, anyone who knows boxing slightly, um, or anyone who just wants to be there for the atmosphere, knows both um, will be red hot and a red hot atmosphere, and it'll be um, a great fight. You don't need that kind of trash talk. Um, everyone knows that. Definitely not. Um, when you hear people calling this a crossroads fight, saying that the winner will or can potentially go and fight yeah. for another world title, you're both former world champions yourself, the loser will have yeah. to call it a day. What, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I don't listen. I don't. I don't look at it like that as in losing. I can't speak on behalf of Ricky in that sense, but I don't believe the loser has to retire. But the loser does have to either rebuild, or it's a long road back. It's always a tough road back. Won't be doing, done any favors for sure anyway. Um, but like you said, the winner, I believe, will get another world title shot. It's. Um, it's one of them, it's so important. I think every fight, you know, it's always the most important because it can mess up future plans, but certainly here yeah, with what's at stake, like you've said. And um, like I say, I'm confident, I'm confident October 7th, I will come out on top and I will challenge for world titles again. Um, but it's a great fight to be in. Listen, we both could have come back and probably do, you know, a fight what people call a gimme, there's a such thing. But um, it's not something I'm interested in. It's, uh, it's not something Rick is interested in. Either we want proper fights, and that's what this is. It's a proper fight. I uh, said the same thing to Ricky in my interview with him, that when you also hear people call you two, uh, two of the sport's biggest overachievers in the game, and yeah. his response to that was, I've worked my arse off to, to get yeah. where that was. So... If you want to call it that, or someone wants to call it that, then then whatever. But yeah. is that kind of your attitude to that as well? Yeah, I couldn't. <laughs> overachievers or whatever, or overachievers or not, we've achieved that. So so be it. I've seen that people say that. It's, um, I'm not going to lie. There's a lot more talented fighters out there than me, and uh, probably similar to Ricky. But I've I've worked very hard to get the best out of my attributes. So if anything, when people call me an overachiever, I see it as a compliment. This fight, October 7th, like I said, from your last two performances against a very good fighter in Jorge Linares, and we'll come on to him and, and Luke Campbell. But what did you really take from those two defeats, uh, yeah. sort of moving forward for you? I believe with those 24 rounds, I believe I'll be a better fighter for it. I believe last time, I really thought that I'd made improvements in the gym. I didn't really get to, to show them. And that was, for me, that was down to Yogi. How he, he fought a perfect fight. He fought very well. But I still believe I'm improving as a fighter. And um, it was a fight, listen, I lost the second fight well, but it wasn't a fight where I know I know um, I got put down in it, but I wasn't, you know, my head wasn't flying about, it wasn't a sickening, you know, it wasn't like it weren't it weren't to the same where I think it put miles on the clock. I just I got outsmarted and um, listen I did, I, I got I got well beat, but like I say, it's um, it's a fight that I, I felt that I learned, I feel that I've learnt from and I'll be a better fighter for it. If you look at the, the opponents that the pair of you have faced over the last three years, I yeah. mean, you look, you're talking about the current, some of the best pound pound yeah. fighters there are. Yeah, it is. And, um, and that's it. And that's what I think where that goes back to, where we both could have gone in for an easier fight to then sort of try and rebuild to get another title shot. We both want to be in these proper fights. And um, Ricky, like you say, you look at some of the fighters he's fought over a few years and the only ones to beat him are the elite. Um, so it's, it's, I know on October the 7th, Q, and I know I've got to be at my very best to beat him, but I believe that if so, I, I will have enough to beat Ricky. Um, this is going to be um, another one of those Manchester cars stacked with uh, <laughs> sort of local talent, and obviously yeah. 
Robbie Barrett defending his uh, British fight. title against Lewis, uh, Richardson. Lewis Richardson. Yeah. I'm sure Eddie will probably add a couple more fights to the bill as well. So it's going to be one of them nights in Manchester again. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a great card and it's, it's a card that the crowd deserve. And I really think that it, it will do. It's um, they'll deliver, as Eddie's mentioned, some of the top prospects in Joshua Boatze and um, Josh Kelly, who are two of the best prospects, not just in British boxing, but in world boxing. Um, on that, and then you've got a few Scottish fighters and a few local Mancunian fighters who will who will bring great support with them. It's going to be for me. It's going to be a special night, it really is. So, just finally, your thoughts on obviously Luke Campbell uh, yeah. going out to America to take on um, Jorge Linares, someone yeah. who's very sort of qualified to answer yeah. that question about that fight. So, yeah. what's your thoughts on that, and and how yeah. good a chance has Luke Campbell got? Eddie Hearn says so, that. He believes Luke Campbell will knock Linares out, quote Eddie Hearn. We'll see, we'll see. But um, I think Luke, obviously, I, I took the question I tried to ask Yogi, um, are very different questions to the ones that Luke, where Luke's very good at long range, very good distance fighter, technically very good. He, um, he whips that ball up, uppercut in from the southpaw stance very well, which will be interesting to see how Yogi deals with it. He's... Um, you know, Luke, I've got a, a lot of respect for to come from the level at an amateur, you know, to to win Olympic gold, to be challenging for the best prizes in the sport. But whereas I've got a, I've got a to lean towards Yogi though, he's uh, as in, you know, for experience at the top flight, and uh, obviously sharing a room with him for 24 rounds. I know how just how good he is, uh, but I think it's a fight I'm really looking forward to. Both two good guys. And um, it's a fight I'm really looking forward to watching. I think everyone will be. But um, you've obviously got your own matters in hand. Yes, October that's it. If that not, name. I probably would have had a nice trip out to LA. What's that? If not, I would have had a yeah. nice trip out to LA to watch it. It would be a great fight. Absolutely. Um, have you, he's obviously been over here doing a little bit of training, hasn't he? Yeah, he is. He's in London now, Yogi. Yeah. I, was, I was at the um, Eubank and um, Abraham fight. And I was sat with Yogi and his missus um, that night chatting to him. He's, listen, he's, he's a good guy and um, he's enjoying life over here in London. He, look, he looks razor sharp with um, his trainer Salas, as does Luke, um, with his trainer Rubio. So both very good coaches behind them and um, I'm looking forward to the battle. While you're still an active fighter, people will always continue to ask you about the the Manchester derby that yeah. people kind of want to see between you and um, Terry Flanagan. Is that in the in the Anthony Fowler plan or? Yeah, yeah, it, I, I, it's something I definitely have and, and likewise with Terry. At the minute, he's got his mandatory, um, meets with Felix for day old. I think that a date's got to be set for that. I saw Terry the other day actually in the coffee shop. I was chatting to him and he's just coming back from an injury. And um, listen, Terry, I always, you know, wish him the best and likewise. Um, hopefully one day we can get it on. It's, um, it's certainly not through myself or Terry not wanting the fight or all like that, like some people might think, but obviously people understand there's a lot of politics involved. But hopefully one day that can be put aside and be put on a great fight for the city. We shall see. Have you ever met Darren? Darren? Have Darren? Ever, Darren? Have you met Anthony Qualler before? Yeah, I think I'm we sure have. We've come across each other. I just want to introduce, uh, sorry, Darren, Darren Anthony. Nice to meet you properly. Nice to meet you. Keep well? Yeah, yeah, very well. Good, very good. Well. good. We're in a club. We're in Definitely. Very well there, right? very well. <laughs> Who wins the fight, sorry, out of Burns and Crawler? Million dollar. Million dollar. <laughs> what did you say in the car on the way up? I said the million dollar, but I said the Rigsters be mate as well. Mate, he was back in there. Back in there. That's all right, no problem. It's on camera and all. Anthony, thank you very much for talking to Eiffel TV, and I'm sure we'll catch up with you ahead of October 7th. Take care, mate.